Hey everybody, how's it going? Hope you're having a lovely day. If you own a Nest first or second generation thermostat that no longer functioned as a result of Google disabling its functionality, even though it's a perfectly working product, you should be pretty happy today. You're probably gonna have a better day because these thermostats now work again. Fulu Foundation is a nonprofit that is dedicated to restoring the rights of ownership and reforming anti-ownership laws in the United States. And we put out a bounty program where we said, if somebody manages to make these devices work again, we will give you $10,000. If people want to donate to increase the bounty, we will match those increases up to $10,000. I believe it's up to approximately $14,000. I'll put the exact amount down below at the release time of this video. Two groups of people contacted us that did an exceptional job. They were very, very close in time so I didn't want to do something. You got the solution first, so sorry to this other person that did a really exceptional job, nothing for you. So we're actually going to be paying out the bounty to both Team Dinosaur and to Cody. So the $10,000 bounty with the $4,000 from our match and your donations, we're actually going to give about $14,000 to both Team Dinosaur and to Cody. Thank you very much for a job well done. One of the interesting things that we learned throughout the course of this bounty program and throughout the Nest bounty is that the Nest thermostat, even though it no longer allows you to use a lot of its smart functionality once they have discontinued support for it, that doesn't mean that it no longer goes on the internet. Google says that this is important for cybersecurity, yet the thermostat is still uploading approximately 50 megabytes per day of Linux logs and everything that this thermostat is doing to Google on a regular basis. So even though you're no longer able to have control over your smart thermostat, Google still gets to see what you're doing with your smart thermostat. This is one of those things that just kind of blows my mind because there are people out there in the cybersecurity world that may say, are you concerned about having older hardware stay online and how this could be a cybersecurity risk into the future? It doesn't seem like Google was as concerned about that considering that the device remained online and continue to connect to Google servers on a regular basis and send them everything you're doing with your thermostat. That's just, yeah. Thank you, Google. Th thank you very much for that. What about cybersecurity, Lewis? What about these devices that are old Internet of Things devices that are remaining online? And I agree with you. It would be nice if people would be able to continuously patch these devices and work on them. And unfortunately, the way the law is written right now, they can't because if they break a digital lock to get access to this and then they show you how to do it, they traffic that solution, that is three to five years in federal prison. I think this law needs a lot of reform. The law that we're talking about reforming is Section 1201 of the Digital Millennium Copyright Act. This is a law that came out in the late 90s. It is nearly 30 years old. Most of the people watching this video did not have the internet at all in 1997. Now the internet is in your washer, your dryer, your air conditioner, your car, everything. Some people don't think that's a good thing. And I particularly don't think it's a good thing when companies have the ability to turn off what you own as a result of it connecting to the internet. I want to see a world where innovation is fostered, real innovation, making things better, not making things worse and finding new ways to rob the general public blind. Innovation is a term that I value. But as I've said on this channel in the past, it is a term that has been sullied and dirtied by groups of people that use that word anytime they want to have the ability to screw over general consumers and the public and get away with it without having to actually pay any consequences. I believe in real innovation. I believe in the people that started in their garage, messing with stuff, hacking with stuff, figuring things out, reverse engineering, taking things apart, figuring out how to reprogram them, and then starting companies. This is how companies like Hewlett Packard got started. This is how companies like Apple got started. Many of the great American upstarts were created by people that enjoyed tinkering with the devices that they owned and figuring things out about them. It's how they gained the knowledge that was necessary for them to create the great pillars of the American economy. And that is being taken away. This type of work is being done in other countries. The iPhone 7 headphone jack coming back. This isn't a DMCA issue, but you're, that happened in China. That did not happen in the makerspace in America. We are losing that culture. And I would like to try and foster bringing that culture back. There's only so much that I can do by myself. We are going to do our best to support leaders in the political and the business space that want to foster this type of innovation. There are politicians like this. We also have the duty not to infringe the IP rights in the process. It is, in fact, the manufacturers who have the relevant rights, not consumers. The transmission example, authentic, tra I've got two John Deere tractors. One's got a busted engine, the other's got a busted transmission. Currently, they will prohibit you from moving the transmission from one to the other. From a standpoint of intellectual property, where in God's green earth or the Constitution are any of those designed to be rights that belong to the manufacturer rather than rights that belong to the owners of those two John Deere tractors? 
So it, it, the- there are people like Daryl Issa that I think are uh, very much so in favor of you being able to repair what you bought and paid for and be able to program what you bought and paid for. It's your computer. You own it. You should be able to control what you do with it. And then there are other cornball politicians that I've spoken to that think that something like this may be a little bit too radical, too much of an edge issue. When we're talking about things like health care or immigration, people losing their food stamps, whether abortion should or shouldn't be legal on all those issues, the thing that's too much of a thorn in somebody's side is whether or not you should go to prison for three to five years because you flashed a thermostat with third-party firmware. When you look at cases like Green versus DOJ, and you look at the, the way that these are decided, it doesn't even come down to whether or not the, it, it is against the First Amendment argument. It comes down to interests. It, whether it, there is greater interest in one area or another. And what I want to do is try and bring this back into the culture in a mainstream way so that the interest is in ownership over what you bought and paid for. So that when these types of cases are brought to court again, when these types of issues are brought before a legislature again, a legislature and a group of people that are dealing with things like health care, immigration, abortion, and everything else, that this is not considered to be too much of a radical issue. I think it's actually quite mainstream. When it came to Apple motherboard repair on this channel back in the day, I didn't tell you all, this is something you should care about. Here's why and lecture you. I try to show you what it is that I found fun. I would show you exactly how to fix everything. I would show the schematics on screen, even though there's a chance that I'd hear from Apple's legal department back in 2013 and 14, nobody was doing this type of thing. And I, I didn't care. I, I knew that if there was any hope for me to bring apart the change I wanted to see in the world, I can't just talk about it. I have to actually be a part of it. I have to get you involved and excited, and it means that I have to cater to people's self-interest. You need to be able to benefit from these types of repairs, even if you're not coming to a repair shop like mine, even if you're never gonna give me money. You can't just listen to me talk about reforming laws like the DMCA. You need to have something that's on your wall, that's broken, that is no longer broken as a result of what we're doing. And that's what I'm trying to do here. Make sure that this issue stays in the public consciousness. When you hear some opposition lobbyists talk about how the manufacturers have the rights, not consumers, push back against it. When you see that somebody has a Nest thermostat on their wall and they're complaining about the fact that it no longer works, let them know that a solution exists. And more importantly, let them know how close they were to that solution not existing. Let them know about the laws in the books that make making those types of solutions available illegal. I understand that I am trying to plant a tree here that I'm likely never going to sit in the shade of. And that's okay, as long as that tree, at the very least, doesn't die. Are you open to helping us make sure that that tree doesn't die? Are you open to coming on this journey along with me as we try to free as many devices as possible and along the way, let as many people know why this is important, why this is bipartisan, why there is virtually nobody in the United States of America besides a very, very small group of people that benefit from us not owning what we bought and paid for that are against it. I hope you all enjoy your Nest thermostats. I hope they keep working for a long time. Thank you for following me on this journey. Kevin, Maria, Keith, Jake, Divyansha, and everybody else that's been involved in putting together this bounty program. Thank you to Team Dinosaur and to Cody for putting together this amazing solution. And above all, thank you to the audience for sticking by over the past 13 years. Wouldn't be in the position to be able to do this without you. Hope to see you for the next 13. See you in the next one. Bye now. We also have the duty not to infringe the IP rights in the process. It is in fact the manufacturers who have the relevant rights, not consumers.